The worst thing Joe did was walk around here fucking farm animals, or fucking the farm animals. Him and John Finley dressed up like, John Finley dressed up like cheerleaders and Joe would film him fucking all the animals. Hey guys, welcome to Nikki's house. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode. You're not gonna wanna miss anything. Mike. Mike. Mike, I got the best. I got the best interview ever. I bet you did. I got the best. I'm telling you, I got information that nobody else has in the interview. Is that Thor? He's a pretty boy. Yeah, that's one of Shaq's too. Mm. That's the other one. Don't bump your head behind you. Oh. He's beautiful. <laughs> I remember you had Jagger in the last. You had him for a while, right? Yeah, he's really good. Wow. How many tigers here total? Almost 200. Wow. 200 big cats. I mean, tigers, lions. Yeah. How beautiful. Okay. I be wow, you're handsome. Wow. Pretty cool. You still amazed by like how amazing this is? <laughs> you know, it's I've done this. My family owned a circus, so and it became Wrangling Brothers. So I've been in this since Jesus wore some sandals, and so I'm kind of jaded by it. You know, it's. We came out to Vegas. That was the longest time I've been away from big cats, almost my whole life. How long were you gone for? For a year and a half. We lived and in Vegas we... for a year and a half. But you know, as you know, we had cubs out there all the time. Yeah. But, so what was it like coming back and like experiencing that for the first time after a month and a half? Or you know, was it a year and a half or a month and a half? A year and a half. Um, well, we came back you know a few times to check on the park and check on our cats because Lauren and I had our own cats here. Joe had 160, and then the rest of them were ours. So we came back to make sure everybody's healthy and don't forget us and we don't lose that connection. But um, we came back and just, when you discover all the shit that was going on, you know, when we got back here, kind of, we were pissed, quite right. frankly, we, you know. He was locking me out of my own bank account and pissing away. We found 150,000 out of one account that was gone for his political bullshit, you know, campaign signs and rubbers and con uh, rolling papers and t-shirts. Right. And you know, it's illegal because a, a company can only donate $2,700 to an individual political candidate. So, you know, he stole 150 grand. There's, you know, 50 counts of, of campaign finance fraud that I think he'll be charged on. But, um, and then, you know, just to find out that all the shady shit was going on, he was killing cats down there to make room for other cats, that it was just, it wasn't a pleasant visit back. Um, the video where you saw me blowing up at him in the office, we uploaded the full, the full uncut versions. They're like almost an hour and a half long. And I, you know, I throw every fucking crime in the book at him that I knew he did. And he sits there and you know, he doesn't say, well, you did this, you did that. But of course, after the fact, he wants to say, well, well you, you did this, you put, po you put perfume on my shoes and tried to get me killed and maybe making up all this stupid shit. So I, I think that was probably some of the most damning evidence against him is when they played those videos. And he sat there and he says, you know, well, I can't take, I made $200,000 in cub sales. You know, he admitted on video to selling, he's just dumb, you know. He, yeah. He's, he's just ignorant to the fact that we were recording everything. Some of it was for our own protection. Some of it was because the feds asked us to, to get certain things recorded. And, you know, everybody wants to say, you're a fucking snitch and you're a snitch and you're a rat. Okay, if I know who, if I knew he'll kill Don Lewis right now, if I knew where he was, and I knew how it happened. Wouldn't everybody in the world want me to tell what I knew? Yeah. You know, so what's the difference? I knew every crime that Joe was committing and he was killing animals. So, yeah. you know, let him call me a rat. I don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, saved, it saved hundreds of animals from certain death. Mm -hmm. he, he admitted he was, Joe was providing Doc Annell with cubs. You know, every, every couple few months, he'd send three or four cubs out to Myrtle Beach. And you heard Joe admit at the end of that documentary and he says, Doc Annals, you know, burns cubs once he's done with them. You know, he kills them, he puts them to sleep, and then he puts them in an incinerator and kills them. And, and burns them. 
So Joe knew that. You know, he knew that every time he gave Doc Anno cuds, that they were certain to be dead within four or five months. Wow. And he just kept doing it. That's who Joe was, you know. And did Carol Baskin and Joe ever do business? No, no. I, I, I think she was against him because he was doing the cub petting. She was against him from day one, you know, which is a little bit hypocritical because she used to have a, like she had um, cabins. She had cabins that you could rent and, and she'd put a cougar in there with you for the night. <laughs> so like a bed and breakfast with cougar, with cougars. And, you know, she just, she claimed she found Jesus and, and realized the, the, the wrongs of her ways. But, you know, she, she still was harassing him to the point of going, you know, he had shows, magic shows at all these malls across America, and she would get his schedule. She'd call those malls and say, he's an animal abuser, and if you let him perform there, we're going to boycott your retailers, and we're going to make all kinds of, you know, I have two million followers on Facebook. So, of course, they don't want controversy. They're going to start canceling his shows. So they cut off his, his financial means to support his animals, and he got pissed. A cat in a tree down there. Wow. That's awesome. He got pissed. He got pissed, and rightfully so. He, what he was doing was perfectly legal. Right. And she just didn't like it. She didn't agree with it, so she was going to cause him shit. That's the kind of bitch that she was. Right. And, and you know what? And she's getting her just desserts now. And he actually, ironically, they took each other out at the same time. It's, wow. Uh, you know, yeah. If, if you've seen those two fight, that picture of two fighters hitting each other yeah. with a knockout blow, that's what happened with these two. Is they're both ruined for the. You know, Carol Baskin will never recover for this. She's the most hated woman on earth. Everybody, from Sonic to you know, every church that you see with those changeable letter signs, Carol did it. Carol, you know, making fun of Carol Baskin, and you know, she deserves it. She deserves every bit of criticism, and and this is better than her dying. You know, everybody said, don't you want her dead? I wouldn't miss her if she died, but I'd rather see her suffer through this same shit that she put everybody else through. You know? Right. It's, well, see, Carol Baskins looks exactly the same, if not worse. It's, it looks worse than this. Yeah, way her place worse. Sucks. Her place sucks. I mean, sucks. these are huge areas for the lions and tigers to play around with here. I don't understand what. So it looks like she's she's just jealous of the profits. Yeah, right? she's, you know, she's jealous that, that we get the attention. I'm sure this is killing her. That she, the, the, the producers apparently told her that it was going to be a show that would benefit her and her her um, efforts to stop cub petting. When all they were doing is they lied to her and they're just going to flip the switch on her and, and make her look like a you know a criminal. Right. But you know, so now she's crying and bitching and moaning. And you know they did the same thing to us. They said, look, we're gonna we're gonna make expose Carol Baskin or make Joe look like an idiot and then they tried to make it look like I stole the zoo right I'll, sh I'll show you the paperwork we get up there. Joe dissolved his zoo I my zoo was formed after he dissolved his corporation he shut this place down he was out of money and Lauren and I came in here we ponied up probably a hundred and twenty or thirty thousand dollars to get all the back bills paid so they turned the electric back on they turned the water back on we the meat distributors would start delivering meat again because cats were going hungry so, you know, we came in here and we saved his ass, and once I got it making money again, that's when Lauren and I, we were tired of his shit because he's just a diva, and we just, you know, him and Lauren were butt heads every day. She's a red-headed cunt, and I, you know, I'd have to, yeah, you would call her one cunt one more time, and I'll knock you the fuck out. Joe so, called her, oh, called yeah, Lauren a cunt? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, so, you know, we, Ooh. so we said, look, we're going to Vegas, and you run this place. You know, he, we the cats were more healthy once I started buying meat again, for you know, for Joe. So we just said, I can't deal with this. I'll, I'll kill this bastard if I stay here very long. So that's when we went to Vegas, and then we were getting calls from you know people in the park saying, you know, he's blaming you guys. This park's not making money. It's, it's all right. So we snuck back in here because I knew I had to be making money. We snuck back in, went to the bank, and got a year's worth of bank statements because he was hiding them from me. He locked me out. Of, like I'd go to log in from Vegas and it wouldn't let me in. He'd change the password. And I said, right, it's time to it's time to check on the you know the bank accounts. Came back in here and we found he forged fifty thousand dollars in checks to cash and signed my name in front of the goddamn teller. He'd, he'd write it to Jeff Lowe, he'd stamp my signature on it, then he'd go to the bank and he'd endor endorse Jeff Lowe in front of the tellers and they'd hand him the money. He's never on my account. They knew he wasn't Jeff Lowe. You know, even if they didn't know exactly who he was, they didn't know he they knew he wasn't Jeff Lowe. Right. So 
you know, the bank facilitated his robbing us blind. And and when we found that out, it was it was over. I mean, and I went to my attorneys. Um, I said, this is what I know. You know, he's trying to kill this woman, and he's robbing me blind. And so they took all that information, and they had a powwow with my attorneys in Oklahoma City. They said, you know, we have no choice, but we have to tell the feds what's going on. You know, the forgery and the, you know, the murder for hire and, and all this stuff. So he'd ordered ghillie suits, you know, come in here, these camouflage, look like Sasquatch. And it's like, what the hell is this for? And you know, Rinky says, that's, he thinks he's going to send somebody to Tampa and kill Carol Baskin. So he was getting all, he was buying camouflage and, and he had his gun picked out, which one he was going to use. And he was just, he's just insane. Wow, that's wild. So, do you think Carol Baskin killed her husband? Absolutely, I think absolutely, and um, and I did. I, I know things that weren't on that show that that we, you know, Joe told me over the years. Um, he had somebody he suspected um, very strongly of helping her, and the Hillsborough County Sheriff released a statement on TMZ yesterday, I think, or maybe this morning. He says she, he says whoever did it, it took, it was more than one person, and. I said, all right, well, that follows my, you know, my belief. And I, I contacted a friend that works with Sheriff's Department and said, here's who you need to look at, and here's where you need to look for the meat grinder. So, yeah. Wow, so, the meat grinder? Can you talk about any of that? Um, you know, probably not, because yeah. you don't want somebody undoing what they've done, to, you know. Yeah. Of course. It'll come out soon. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That is crazy. So, I mean, Joe, Joe accumulated four file cabinets full of shit on Carol. You know, everything from the forged wills to the forged power of attorneys and, and you know, FBI handwriting and, and, and analysis guys determined that it wasn't Don Lewis's signature on any of those documents. Everything that was notarized was notarized by Carol's sister or Carol's cousin or somebody, you know, somebody in the family, which is illegal. Yeah. So, everything she did was was to cover up a crime in all appearances. Right. I believe I believe with every fiber of my body that she did it. You know, Don was Don was planning to divorce her and leave her penniless. So right. she could not let that happen. She was Joe had her diary which described her she was a prostitute for four years. That's when she met Don. She was hooking on that road and he was picking her up as a as a as a whore. Oh, that's and the that, real story. That's the real story. And she wasn't just running away from home. She was a prostitute. And he was picking up a hoe and the road that she was on is a well known traffic prostitution uh, corridor. Wow. In in Tampa. So So escorts, you could start your own business one day. You know, all care about you. Just don't kill your husband. <laughs> Do you know how he sardine oil. Have you ever heard how he obtained her diary? Yeah, Joe had somebody Joe at one point had somebody inside Carol's network working in her office and she found Carol's diary and sent it to Joe. Wow. Wow. What and all kinds of that. internal documents that Joe had, you know, showing the deaths of all these cats and, and she would she would bring a cat in, fundraise twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars on it and then put it to sleep. Wow. You know, she, so she didn't have to care for it and use any of the money she just raised. You know, defeat it for the next 10 years. Wow. She's so had sad. more cat deaths down there than Joe ever had here, and nobody ever looked at her. Wow. Do you think that her demeanor of being a nice lady kind of covers up the real person that she is? Well, you know, she she giggles. She's got the you know that nervous giggle when she talks, and even when it's you know the, the notion of me killing my husband is just ridiculous, and then chuckles about it. Who chuckles about something like that? You know, right. you just. If someone accused me, I'd say, you're fucking crazy that, yeah. you know? So she just doesn't act like an innocent person. and A different kind of crazy. She's she's bad shit crazy. Did you, see, you saw the wedding pictures of her walking her husband on the leash on the beach? Yeah. The yeah. Fuck? yeah. What is up with that? Can there's, we talk about that? There's no amount of money that would give me to humiliate myself like that. That's just... And he's supposed to be a, 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 a law a lawyer that... Graduated from Harvard or someplace? Are you fucking kidding me? Get walked by a leash with a tiger costume yeah, on. Yeah, that crazy bitch. I don't know if they're just an odd, odd couple. And and I think I think the problem is is she and Joe were too much alike, and they both wanted to be king of the mountain. Right. And and now they left you king of the mountain. I guess so. <laughs> I dethroned the king, so I guess I'm the new king. Right. But, you know, it's it's but it's not. 
it's not about a person anymore. This park is now about the animals. And with Joe, it was all about Joe. Right. You know, he had to have his face on every vehicle. You know, he put his stickers on the side. Every Coke machine had, you know, full seven foot tall Joe Exotic stickers on it. Right. Um, oh. Asked to meet country music sensation Joe Exotic. Fucker never sang a song in his life. All of that was lip synced and, and he it, paid. It, it doesn't sound like him. That wasn't him? him? He can't sing. He can't sure. sing. He cannot sing a lick. Who's and, the I singer? Mean, Do we know the singer? Yeah, they just announced it on um, TMZ today. Some group out of Washington who's not trying to capitalize on it, but it's like in Spotify, it's all hitting number one, and you know Joe's getting credit for it in, in an odd in an odd way, but they acknowledge that it's not him. Right. So, but look at just think of the people he defrauded. We had cases and cases of his DVDs, and. I don't know what the hell he paid for those, you know, to be produced, but selling them and autographing them as though it was him. And even in the documentary, this is my new DVD, got 16 songs and 16 videos, and yeah. yeah. How can you, how can you stand and tell that to somebody and sign it like you're, he's, he's, <laughs> it takes a twisted individual, you know. It wasn't him at all. It wasn't him, <laughs> he, um, he tried to sing at Travis's wedding, I mean Travis's funeral. And I'm like looking at Lauren saying, what the fuck is about to happen here? This is, he had a big sound system put up. He goes, now uh, I've been crying for days. And he says, so if my voice doesn't sound normal, oh. then, then you know, you just have to realize that I'm just I'm devastated. And then he sings this horrible rendition of one of his songs. And that's when, you know, everybody's looking at each other saying, mm -hmm, there's the real singing voice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's just a fraud. Everything he, his Facebook page says he was an actor living in Hollywood, West Hollywood. He's never been to Hollywood. You know, I asked him one day. I said, "Have you ever been to Hollywood?" He says, "No, never been out there." Was he on the cover of those magazines? No, he paid. I've got the emails that we found in his email. He was paying three thousand dollars to be on the cover of a Hollywood Weekly magazine, and then he had to agree to buy, I don't know, four hundred copies at three bucks a piece or something and he would sell them in a the gift shop and autograph. So he, he was on the cover three times, meaning that he took $9,000 from the park to put his face on those on those magazines. Wow. They should have been putting your face on there. No, he should, you know, like billboards up and down the highway. We took them all down, but at one point we were paying $12,000 a month in billboards and it was just his big ass face. So when Carol came after him and got the judgment and, and I came in and changed the name, I said, all right, well, I'm putting all new billboards up. And we left, because I said, I want all new billboards. I want to put cats back on and take your face off the billboard. We came back in, just a completely different revision from what I had, and his face is on every one of them. So, I said, fuck it, I stopped paying for it. So, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. So, what did he say? Nothing, he was, I, at, that, at that point, shit had gone so bad. And I was harassing him every day about something, you know, that he was just throwing money away. He had, every time he got a new boyfriend, he'd go buy a new six or $80,000 Dodge Dooley and give it to this guy. Yeah, we had five Dodge Dooleys up here at one point that we were making fourteen to $1,600 a month payments on. You know, $80,000 for a truck and, and he'd get him in his mom's name because he had no credit. And he'd get him in his mom's name because if he ever paid one off, Carol Baskin wouldn't be entitled to it. So everything was everything was always in someone else's name, but you know we always got the bill for $140,000 motorhome that, that we were paying for, and went back to the bank because he quit because I quit paying for it. But then when the straw that broke the camel's back, and I came in and he, you know, Travis died in October, and Joe got married in December uh -huh. to a new guy. So three months later, yeah. So he bought wow. this he bought this kid this punk bitch kid. Uh, a brand new Mustang, and stole. He wrote a ten thousand dollar cash check, and forged my name to it for the down payment, and went up here and then falsified, completely falsified. I found in QuickBooks, he had created this um, this payment history to himself of you know several hundred dollars, seven or eight hundred dollars a week, and I'm thinking, what the fuck is he, is he stealing seven hundred dollars a week? What is going on? I couldn't figure out why this ledger was created. I said, oh, I know what it is. And I went back and found the financing. He turned it in to Seth Wadley Ford up here to buy a new Mustang and just lied about the... When he got caught in Florida, he was at a hospital applying for a job as an ER nurse 
with a completely falsified resume that some nurse helped him fill out here to go down there and completely defraud this hospital on his medical um, experience and, and wow yeah, he was he was a character at what point do you think Joe just went nuts I, you know he's been nuts ever since I met him he was just a he was just a he, he had some control over his over his urges but after Travis died after Travis shot himself I think Joe Joe you know, flipped the switch he just went completely over the edge and that's when he hired the hitman and you know so I think he I think he wanted to die and he wanted to make sure that before he died that she was dead right that makes sense mm -hmm. that makes and he's just too big a coward if I wanted somebody dead I'm not hiring anybody I'm gonna go do it myself right yeah yeah wow we we heard about a fight that you got in with Dylan in a parking lot. Yeah, beat his ass. Yeah, what, what happened? What happened? You tell Dylan, tell you us about that. We, um, <laughs> Lauren and I were coming from the cabin, walking over towards the nursery, and Dylan was not supposed to be on the park. I told Joe, I said, you get that little bitch off my park, because he's flipping us off every time he drove by. And um, so he, um, he was a 21-year-old cheerleading fuck, and he was standing by a garden hose getting some water for cat, um, for his camel. And he flipped the Get hose. A camel? Yeah, I paid for a you know, for a white camel, and they fucking took it. But he turned the hose on Lauren, and I said, "Oh, the fuck, you did not just do that, you know?" Because it wasn't like a friendly thing. He was he was just trying to be a fucking asshole. She was holding the hose. Yeah, the she hose? was holding a baby a baby cat walking in the nursery, and he sprayed her with a hose. Oh. And I said, "All right, you're a dead motherfucker now." Right. So he you know starts lipping off, and I follow him out, and he comes charging me at the parking lot, beat the fuck out of him. And, wow. um, you know, so Joe says, that's the straw that broke Cameron's back. I just can't do this anymore. You're beating up my husband. And, you know, so that was the end of it. <laughs> Joe, Joe was gone the next day. Oh, no way. But Lauren and I went to see a movie in Norman about an hour away. And so Joe figured we were going to be gone for several hours. And we got about 10 miles up the road. And I said, you know what? I don't feel like seeing a movie, you know, especially as a dumb movie or and so this is go back and watch TV. So we came back to the park, completely unbeknownst to Joe. And there's activity out here in the back. And I think, who the hell's in the park at 7.30 at night? So we come down here and Joe's got the guy from Skulls Unlimited, which is a taxidermist. Uh, they do bone um, skeletal recreations for you know, museums and things. And he's down here and the vet, or Joe's regular vet is down here. And Rinky, the guy with no legs, is down here. And I hear a tractor coming around the corner. The tractor comes around the corner and there's two dead tigers on it. I say, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, I'm just trying to loot, lighten your load before I leave. And I said, he had a list of 26 cats that he was gonna kill that night. And we caught him after he'd killed the second one. They had drawn the needles to kill two more. And I said, you kill one more fucking cat and you're going next. I said, I'll, I'll kill you where you stand. So, yeah, wow. Jeff, I just trying to get the fuck off. I threw everybody off the park. Yeah, so had we gone to see that movie, we'd have come back and there'd been 26 less cats here. Yeah. And it wasn't because of anything other than he did not, he knew I was throwing him off the park and he didn't want me to have enough animals to draw a business. He wanted, you know, that was his fuck you to me, so. Right, wow. Yeah. So Scumbag. he left. Scumbag. Oh yeah, he left the next day. He packed his shit and he headed out. He went up and he rented a house in Yukon under, under a fake name. He paid the woman extra money to keep the utilities in her name. He was hiding out because he he knew he knew something was happening. He knew that some authorities were after him. And he was trying to he was trying to be you know, incognito, and it's hard to be Joe Exotic and be incognito. You know? Right, right, right. With that mullet and everything. Yeah. Hi, Jax. Hey, baby. Yeah, this one. Yeah, it's like this one. Oh, good. I love this little one. What, what's his name? That's um, Khaleesi. May take Khaleesi. Yeah, Khaleesi, Sansi, Jon Snow, and Drogon. Are all Game of Thrones characters. So, how long are you guys going to be closed down for for the COVID 19 thing? I don't know. Probably like everyone else, you know, probably another month. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm paying you, but I'm paying the bills. Right. Eye on goes. Oh. Hi, beautiful. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I was gonna ask you about the uh, baby. black black jaguar white tiger guy. He was getting harassed by Carol Baskin. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I said, you know what? That's why I, I told Joe, let her piss off a cartel member. <laughs> you know, you know was, how stupid is she? That's how that's how arrogant she is. And she showed up in Mexico apparently for some kind of a conference, you know, preaching the ills of pub petting, and she she was so put off by the fact that he wouldn't invite her to her his facility. It's like, who the fuck do you think you are? And then you walk into somebody else's country and, and criticize them because they won't give you a tour of his private so you can go back and bash him, you know? Right. Which is, you know, let her, let her bash those guys. You know, um, Mario from the special, the guy that they did the Scarface after. Uh -huh. She's giving him shit. And I said, hey, you're, oh, you're about smart. fucking brilliant, right? Yeah. You know, he, um, Mario has his history. Yeah. And it, it isn't one that you, I would mess with, right. you know? And um, you know, he's a great guy, I like Mario, I don't talk to him, but you know, I, I wouldn't want to be on the bad side of, of a guy who had that reputation. You right. know? They didn't make that movie Scarface for nothing. And, right. And a lot of that was true to life. And she's just that arrogant, you know, and that, that cocky. And that's why I don't think she has any sympathy now from anybody. Uh, you know, except her husband, and maybe her daughter, but it's it's as much as people call me a rat and a snitch. I was saving lives, you know, yeah. animals' lives. Right. She she's she's got to be just mortified by what she was four weeks ago, and how she was revered as the mother Teresa of cats, according to her, and, and now she's the most hated joke on on planet Earth. Right. And but I don't people see realize it's all the same, right? She's just hypocritical. I mean, she's got cats in cages, charges people 36 bucks to come in and see them. And what's the difference with what Joe was doing and what we did, you know? Right. It's all the same. It's all the same. From what I see, yeah, it's all the same. Why do you guys do that? Why do we do what? it? it it's essential to bring funds in to take care of the cats. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, you, you in, in this economy, people don't have money for groceries and toilet paper. They're not going to... They're not going to fund these kind of things anymore. And, and you know, Peter's behind discouraging it. They're trying to get animals taken out of circuses. And, and you know, it's, it's just people don't realize that everything we're doing is legal and it's regulated by the federal government. Just like the Oklahoma City Zoo, they're, they're a big AZA zoo, but what's the difference? They, they put animals in cages that people pay to come see them. They sell items in their gift shop, you know, so but but they're funded by taxpayer dollars you know we're private so every penny that that doesn't come in the door comes out of my pocket you know from my kids inheritance so um yeah i just but if we choose to have 600 cats here that shouldn't be anybody's business but ours as long as they're well taken care of and you know what? i could keep these cats and, and close the doors and get rid of my usda license just forfeit it and nobody could tell me anything you know the only reason I, I'm governed and, and regulated is because we exhibit. And but we have a spotless, I'm fucking talking spotless USDA record. I mean we have no violations. Joe had hundreds. Doc Annals got hundreds. And you know, we, we're spotless and, and that kills somebody like PETA because they can't come after me on the merits of our activities that come after me and they try to say, well, he was sneaking cubs into hotel rooms in Las Vegas. No, I wasn't. I wasn't sneaking them in. I'm fucking taking them in boldly. You know, we had them, pet carriers walking them through the casinos. We were invited by casinos to bring animals into these high roller areas. Right. So, it's legal. Perfectly legal. And the reason I got arrested out there was not because I had cats in casinos, because I missed court date. Lauren had written it down as one date and they kept telling me another date. And I missed it by a couple of days, and they came after me. So I said, I don't go to court till next week. I said, no, you're supposed to be here two days ago. I said, you fucking kidding me. So Lauren went and got her book, and sure enough. So that's why I got in trouble. And then, you know, I paid $10,000 <coughs> fine. And came back here. Judge had stayed out of trouble for a year, which I never get in trouble. So I was, that was easy. And then the judge says, well, Joe or somebody had called the judge in between and says, well, he's back in the hotels with tiger cubs doing what you told him not to do. So, which was a lie. I was here. And I had affidavits by everybody saying, he's here. The judge says, well, I want to see him. And, but my attorney says, don't come back out here. He says, I think this guy's going to throw you back in jail just because he 
he's you know he's a Peter he's a Peter judge. Uh, so I followed my <coughs> lawyer's opinion, uh, advice, and the judge said, right, put a warrant out for his arrest. So the warrant's since been quashed. I mean, it's gone now, but that's the kind of bullshit you deal with. You know, everything we did was legal, and but we made it to look like these big Las Vegas fucking Bonnie and Clyde. Right. And, but you know, there's no there's I've been in a lot of businesses in my life. And nothing has been as cutthroat and as nasty and as dirty as the animal business. It's like it's like they said in that documentary, they're all nuts. Every fucking one of them is nuts. And you know, Doc Antle with his with his cults and preaching veganism when he's obviously 150 pounds overweight. You know, how many fat vegans do you see walking around? But he tells those girls, you have to eat vegan, you have to watch these movies, you have to be you have to be, you know, this and you have to be that. So you pretty good baby. So it's just, it's just, um, you know, hypocritical at yeah. the right. least. But wow. Can we ask your views on breeding? If you breed and why breeding is important? I think, I think, you know, they're endangered animals and they're obviously not making it in the wild. So if guys like me aren't breeding these animals and they're diminishing in the wild, then what happens? They all go extinct, you know? And I'm not saying we could ever release these back into the into the wild because you probably couldn't. If I raised a hundred, or if I bred a hundred and put them in the wild, maybe one or two of them would survive somehow, but it's not likely. Even in the wild, the average lifespan of a tiger is, is eight years. And 80% of the tigers born don't make it to see their first birthday. So now you're working with 20% of the cats born might live up to eight years. And that's why they're diminishing, you know, the poaching and the, and the poor food supplies because everything else is being poached. All of their prey is being poached. So if guys like us don't responsibly breed, you know, we don't. Joe was breeding just to sell them to everybody. And he'd sell anybody walked in here, a tiger for a couple grand or, you know, and and he would, um, he built this place to speed breed. But I think with us breeding them, we leave them with their moms when it's at all possible. Um, if a mom abandons the cub, or she runs out of milk, which happens, um, when like if they have one cub instead of several, the mothers will always run out of milk. So every time we have a single birth, we leave them with mom until they start to lose weight, until the babies start to lose weight, and then we pull them to keep them alive, you know, with bones. But, if, if people like us don't breed them, we're just speeding up that extinction process because, you know, maybe your granddaughter or, or my daughter's children um, will want to see a tiger and they'll be gone, you know? There's, there's more in Texas right now than there are in the wild mm -hmm. and that's sad. Do you see any solution? I don't. I, you know, I think it's, it's inevitable. And, but every time we have a cub born, it adds 20 years to that, you know, um, to that possibility that somebody's going to be able to see a tiger. And you know what, we, we worked with Texas A&M and, and some, some DNA um, researchers to, to try to keep this going longer. And, you know, we provided DNA from hundreds of cubs that have been born here to try to help, you know, help the situation. But... It's just, I, I think the writing's on the wall. Um, we waited too long. And, you know, if, if they would stop diminishing or deplenishing the rainforests and, and, and the tiger's natural habitats, they might make a comeback. Uh, you know, like we do with the eagles in the United States. The eagles were almost extinct, and now I think a lot of them have been different variety have been taken off the endangered species list. But, you know, it's, they, what I know is there'll be tigers on earth when I die, you know, so hopefully when my daughter, you know, grows up and, and there'll still be tigers here for her and her children. So. And it's funny that everybody worries about the tigers. You never hear anybody talk about lions or jaguars or leopards. It's always, always tigers. And I can't figure that out. If I was breeding lions, everybody would applaud us. What is it about tigers that, you know, I just... I just Social don't... media. Yeah, it's a PETA. It's a PETA pushing mm. it. And, Peter had, you know, hard on for everybody breeding tigers and tiger cubs are so cute for the play times and they just hate it. Does Peter kill animals? Fucking everyone they get. 95% of the animals that they ever come in contact with they kill. And people don't realize that. They, they think Peter is some kind of a, a 
charitable organization that helps animals. They don't. They don't want you to have a cat. They don't want you to have a dog. They don't want you to have any any animal in captivity. They are opposed to. Why do and they kill animals? I mean, uh... they make way too much money pretending to be the savior of of animals, and you know, it's forty to sixty-five million dollars a year in donations, and and then they use that money to harass legal businesses. So let's say that we were doing a ten million dollars a year at the zoo and paying tax on ten million dollars and employing twenty people and they pay taxes on their income and and PETA is using donated money from their 501c3 um, charitable organization that the government of the United States gives them but they're using that to put other taxpayers out of business so not only are they not paying taxes they're wiping out and trying to take out legitimate businesses that do pay taxes wow. and that's bullshit you know they, they're not supposed to use their money for political influence when they're a 501c3, yet they, they take politicians out on deep sea fishing expeditions and they do all these crooked sh things behind the doors um, using those donated monies to put guys like us out of business. So, the, the, so PETA does deep, deep sea fishing with politicians? Yeah. No, they, they, they line pockets, they, they just do anything that it takes to get, to get strict animal regulations passed and they did it in Las Vegas with with Sisolak. Yeah, Sisolak is a PETA supporter and you know he's he's one of the reasons that animals are banned except in the casinos on the strip. Now why is it why is it that Mirage and MGM and Caesars and all those are the only ones in Clark County exempt from the animal ordinances because they pay a lot of taxes and no and they're not going to go Sisolak was not going to go to MGM and say you can't have lions in here because they're going to say well, you know, we're the biggest tax base in in your state so it's just all about money but he doesn't want like a Dirk Arthur or one of the magicians that used to perform out there they don't want them to have you know animals so Siegfried and Wright can have them because they were making 50 million bucks a year you know in in show ticket sales but paying a lot of taxes paying a lot of taxes all it's all about the money, money. Yeah. it's all about the money yeah so how do you think Michael Jackson was getting away with it? Michael Jackson, you know, just he's just like the MGM. You know, he had at one point he probably was probably worth a billion dollars. He owned the Beatles catalog. He had, you know, three hundred million dollar deal with Sony, and you know I think he um, he just got the right lawyers to 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 go to the right politicians and say Michael wants an elephant. Michael wants a tiger. Whatever Michael wants, Michael gets. Right. It's like Elvis. You know, Elvis was. Michael Jackson of, of the earlier era and, and I was friends with their body with Elvis's bodyguards and he says Jeff he says I said why did why could Elvis get all the drugs that he was taking I said nobody ever said no to Elvis right you know everyone wanted to be Elvis's friend and everyone wanted to be Michael's friend right if if LeBron James wanted a tiger I'm sure he would get a tiger and, right you know so life isn't fair we just have to deal with what we're dealt and, and fight the crooked politicians and and you know what you got to go after them once in a while we're, we're about to file a, a defamation lawsuit against PETA they went on they, they sent Shaq you know Shaq is a buddy yeah and they sent Shaq a letter saying you need to disavow your association and sever your relationship with Jeff Lowe because he has a long history of Animal Welfare Act violations that's a fucking bold-faced lie I've never had any violations but they went up and sent Shaq this letter and it got posted on TMZ so now I'm filing a defamation lawsuit against PETA in federal, in federal court. Let them defend it. Let me, let me be in charge of the discovery. Let me get Ingrid Newkirk's cell phone and find out who she's been colluding and conspiring with right. against all these prizes. You know, so it's, it's going to cost a fortune, but it's, somebody's got to do it. Who's Ingrid? She's the founder of PETA, oh, yeah. Ingrid Newkirk. Because when they sue us, they say, well, we want your cell phones. We want to see all the text messages. We want to see your contact list. It's like, fuck you, you know? Who do you think you are? Peter says that? Oh, yeah. They, they did it to a buddy of mine up in, up in Indiana. Got his cell phone records so he could see who he was communicating with, who he was uh, brokering cats with and moving animals with. It's just like, well, I asked, why did you turn your phone over? You're a dumbass. To PETA? Why yeah. did you do that? Yeah. Wow. So did you find a nanny yet? Yeah, we've got a couple. Um, I'm, I'm sure the yeah. uh, list is pretty oh, extensive. To choose from. I've had extensive. since this thing, you know, uh, Netflix slipped and they let my cell phone number get out. They showed it on a on a document on the on a series. 
So I get about six to 7,000 texts a day. And I answer, I try to answer some of them. Some of them are just assholes, but you know, some are people, interviews, you know, that's how Joe Rogan and all these guys said we found out. They found my number and they said, that's where they're shot. Cause we don't, we didn't have an agent. We weren't dealing with any agency that could, could answer the phones for us. Yeah. So, but dude, I got enough naked women sending me pictures and nanny offers and it's crazy. Nanny porn? Nanny porn. <laughs> nanny porn .com. Can we ask you about the, uh, the footage? They say it burnt down in the fire. How do they have the footage for Netflix then? Well, Netflix got footage from me. Um, they paid me for some footage. We found two, three terabyte hard drives in a safe in the office of Joe filming himself for all his political campaigns. Joe had a camera crew like you guys following him every minute of every day and he just filmed everything. So he was like a producer's you know, wet dream. He, uh, they had all this archival footage that they could use and license it for practically nothing, you know, because it wasn't owned by you know, some, some broadcasting company or network. So they got a lot of footage from us for you know, pennies on them, what it was worth. But had we known it was gonna blow up like this, obviously we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have garage sailed it to them but um, he, uh, he burned that studio down. There's no doubt in my mind. He, he didn't want Rick Kirkham having all this footage because a lot Who's of that Rick footage- Who's Rick Kirkham? Oh, Rick Kirkham. Yeah, a lot of that footage was him killing animals. You know, right. Shooting that horse in the head and, right. and doing all these things that, that no one would expect him to have done. And he could not allow that to get out. And the problem is, is Rick Kirkham had a reality show done for Joe. It was sold and when the producers called, and said they wanted, the, the last step is we want Joe in the studio to sing the theme song. And he's like, oh fuck, now what? You know, cause now they're calling him on his singing and his, his lack of being able to. So when they, when they said, all right, it's time to get you in the studio, you're gonna sing the theme song to the show, we're gonna cut the pilot. He told everybody, he says, if you answer that phone when they fucking production calls, you're all fired, you know? So he, um, he, he cost himself a reality show with his lie. And you know, the reality show would have, probably propelled him into some of the the fame that he wanted. And now the ironic thing is, he's probably one of the most famous guys on earth, and he's sitting in a cell, and he, right. he doesn't know it, he can't, he can't read about it, he can't see it, he can't enjoy it. So. He's on lockdown in there? Yeah. Why is he on lockdown, I wonder? Well, I, from what we heard, they moved him out of Grady County, and there was um, confirmed cases of coronavirus. So when they took him down to that medical hospital in Fort Worth, they put him in 14-day quarantine. Wow. Just to make sure he didn't bring it into the into the prison. Wow. Did you see Trump was asked about Joe? Yeah, what's he'll the never get, Trump? He'll never get Trump will never pardon him. Yeah. The federal government has so much on Joe. He was he's they're they're gonna hit him with they're gonna hit him with campaign finance fraud charges. They're gonna hit him with um, um, tax evasion because he never paid taxes. He's he's done. And you know what they had even when they came here. We showed them a hundred cubs that Joe sold, and they, they only selected like five because it was easy to show. Money went from here to here. Joe, you know, John Finley picked up money. So it was the ones that were very simple to explain to a jury. And he killed a hundred tigers while he was here. But the five he was convicted on, we knew exactly where they were buried. It was, they were the most recent ones. We knew exactly how they died with a shotgun blast to the head. So you know, they, they handpicked and and they kind of manicured that the charges against him to to be easily understood by a jury, and they slam dumped him. I mean, they got convictions on every count within three hours. Now you have beautiful women in your house right now. You got mm -hmm. Laura and your wife. Mm -hmm. You got a couple other snickerdoodles in there. Did you ever have sexual relations with Carol Baskin? No. <laughs> Never. 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 If people Fuck. are saying that's your ex-wife, I mean, can we clear this up? Does it look, do, put it this way. I may not be as handsome or as pretty as you are, but I would never stoop that low if I... If I didn't I, think so. Those snickerdoodles at your house are beautiful. Yeah, I, I don't hang with ugly women. My first wife was beautiful. My second wife is beautiful. All our girlfriends are beautiful. I don't hang with ugly women. It's. Um, so we cleared that up. Yeah, absolutely. Never clear. had would, anything to do. I would shoot myself in the head before I'd have <laughs> sex with Carol Bass. I don't even think I would do it to survive. You know that fuck Mary kill? Somebody asked me, you know, Joe Exotic, Carol Baskin, Doc Anno. I said, just kill me. <laughs> I, 
Kill me, kill me, kill me. <clears throat> oh, shit. None of it's happened. How long do you think Carol's got? I as a, as a free woman. To prison, you think? You know, Mario, well, I was talking to Mario, Mario said they're going to get her because he says even without a body, they'll get her because they, he says they charged me with murder for murdering a, a, confident, a government informant. And he says, and trust me, they didn't find the body. So he says they, they'll get her. Um, and now that the pressure's on, there's a Fox TV special on tonight that I don't even know if we'll be able to watch because I don't get Fox, but um, it's digging into it more. And, I, I, you know, if she's got four months of freedom left, I'd be shocked. I think, I think they know a lot more. They said that the Hillsborough County Sheriff said tons of tips are coming in. Uh, my sheriff buddy, or my sheriff's deputy buddy, texted me today. He says they've got so much information that's come in recently. And you know what? Carol used to intimidate everybody. If you were her neighbor, she'd scare the fuck out of you. If you were, you know, anybody, anybody around her was always afraid of her and her influence and her money. And now nobody is. I mean, now everybody sees that she's being made a clown. And and she's the joke of every, you know, meme and, and, and internet blog that she's now not as scary to all these people who've been holding her secrets for all these years. So why do you think Carol's such a bully? I mean, like, what's her who knows? I mean, she just, you know, sometimes not just women, but just people in general. Sometimes they think that they're they're entitled to do what they do and tell you what to do. And if you're doing what they do, they just, you're a threat. She wanted to be the only one in America that had cats in cages that people could come see besides the zoo. Uh. And, you know, we've got 200 cats, she's got 40. But she makes you believe that she's, you know, rescued hundreds and hundreds of cats, and it's just bullshit. She's got like 10 or 12 big cats, lions and tigers, and then she's got servals and bobcats and... Where does she get her, where does Carol Baskin get her cats from? she imports them from other countries she bitches that there's a tiger problem in america there's too many tigers in america yet she'll go to peru, uh, peru where a circus has been closed and she'll get CITES permits and import cats into america wow. so yeah just she's just so hypocritical you know or we don't take care of our cats but then she's in knocking them down and she sex changed a goddamn tiger her her son-in-law was a vet and they performed a sex change on a tiger because they, they thought he identified as the other sex. And, okay, you're batshit crazy. And, you know, if we'd have done that, she would have turned us into the USDA, an unnecessary procedure on an endangered species. She's just crazy. We can't let people pet a tiger cub, but she was offering, you can come in and you can pet a full-grown tiger while he's anesthetized for $3,000. Okay, why is that any different? You're, you're monetizing and exploiting that cat while he's under sedation and we let people pet live baby tigers. What's the fucking difference, you know? It's easy to see why Joe hated her and why everyone in the industry hates her. The only one that supports her was PETA, ironically enough. So, you know, PETA wanted Shaq to sever his relationship with me because I'm such an unsavory character. Well, now I'm asking PETA to sever their relationship with Carol and explain why they've supported her all these years because right. she does exactly what everyone else was doing. But what did Shaq say? Shaq says, fuck Peter. Shaq says, he says, one thing I said, you, know, you don't want to put your face on this. He goes, you know how much stuff I own? <laughs> this is exactly what he said. I said, yeah. I said, Peter doesn't bother you. He says, not at all. He says, they, could, they send me letters all the time. They go right in the trash. So I said, well, good. I said, at least you, you know, at least some of my friends have common sense. And, right. You know, not influenced or intimidated. You know, Shaq is one of the most beloved people in, the, in America. You know, right. I, I don't know anybody that doesn't like Shaq, particularly if they meet him. And he's so personable, he's so kind. He's, you know, he'll walk around this park and he'll he'll shake every little kid's hand and take pictures and sign autographs. And you know, he's he's just genuinely a, a nice man. And that's why he gets so many commercial endorsements. He's just so bankable as a right. nice guy. And so for Peter to pick on Shaq, they're just dumb. Right. Carol Baskin would never even pick on Shaq, and I think it's because. You know, Shaq played in Orlando, he played in Miami. And I think if, she, and he's got a lot of fans there, so if she publicly cries out that Shaq is a monster because for coming here and supporting us, I, I think she would get a lot of repercussions back from from the people in Florida. Just saying, fuck you, you know, we know Shaq, he's nice. So, what we need to get is more celebs out here. I know, <clears throat> you know I've had, you know, I know a bunch, and, and but, yeah. but I don't like 
exploiting those relationships for my own benefit, you know? If Flavor Flav, you know, the Coolio, those kind of guys like to come out here because they like to, because they like the attention and they like to have a little bit of relevance again, you know, in, in, a, in an era gone by. That's fine with me, but you know, I've known some, I know some pretty big celebrities that I could probably, you know, get to come here, but then I just look like I'm using my friends. And, and I don't, I don't want him to feel that way. I, I, it's getting, you know, we're getting a taste of it right now. You know, we're seeing people that we never see before, and I haven't seen in years and years and years. And it's, I, I can see where those guys would feel like they were being exploited. Right. But yeah. What can we see next with your? What are you working on? Are you allowed to talk to yeah, anything about? Yeah, I mean, we're it? actually we're signing a deal. We're signing a, a merchandising deal. To we're gonna we're gonna capitalize on Tiger King. I own the rights to the Tiger King name, um, as far as Joe Exotic is concerned. Um, I mean, Tiger King has been trademarked as a cigarette company or something for years and years and years. But as it, as it pertains to the animal industry, um, we own those rights. They were, I, I bought them from Joe when I took over the zoo. And so we're going to, we're going to rebrand the new park as Tiger King Park. And you know, as long as we can keep this Tiger King thing going, um, nobody talks about season two. I think we're going to produce a season two on our own, um, not with, not with the producers that did it because they don't have exclusive rights to my life story. Yeah. And Lauren and I are really the only viable story going forward because we've got the cats of the Tiger King, and you know these cats deserve better lives than, than Joe gave them. And if we can make money off of the Tiger King brand that it'll be used exclusively for the care of these animals it won't buy me cars it won't buy my you know political aspirations it, it won't it won't go at any place but these animals so we're gonna you, ride, you already we're gonna have the cars animals. you already have everything you i've want. had it all yeah i've had it i mean and it's money's nice but but doing something you love is better it's more rewarding than money in the bank right yeah what are some of the things, if you had the money, what are some of the things that you'd like to use it on in this park? Um, well, you know, we're, we've, we've got, thanks to Tiger King, we've got a big influx of cash coming. We were going to do just another little private zoo like this, but now with, with a generous offer that we've been made by the merchandising people, we're going to, they want the contractors flying here from California on Friday. They came out here last week, and now they've got all of the, you know, the um, diagrams and the zoo um, all drawn out for us and they want to present it to us. He says he can have it done in a few months and he says it'll look like the San Diego Zoo. Um, so we'll see on Friday what that looks like, what that plan looks like, but it's it's going to be nice. I mean, it's going to be much nicer than this. We have really cool rental cabins that are all brand new. Um, we have a big VIP building that was at one time the Cosmopolitan Hotel built this big VIP plexiglass house for like the advertising and the you know Michael Jordan golf tournaments and things and we we got that from them it's set up out there and you know, 15 foot TVs on the walls it's just badass and you know we'll, we'll rent these out and people can hear the lions roar at night we have the the winner of, of a popular TV sh um, cooking show um, that wants to put a restaurant in down there so yeah things are Things are coming along. It's taking longer than we planned. The weather has sucked. The guys won't weld in the rain, and, and and then this coronavirus shit, and then the Joe Exotic stuff. You know, it's it's derailed us a little bit, but I think now it's it's working out because the money we didn't have to finish the park we now have, and um, and it'll be so much nicer than we could have ever afforded to build it. Is there like, do you have somewhere where people can donate uh, to... You know, on our website, there's a donation button. Um, and, but I would rather see people donate to the local animal shelters and, and not the, U not the uh, Humane Society, but go to their actual animal shelters and, and help the animals in their community because, you know, I don't want to take money, people's money when we don't need it. And quite frankly, right now, we don't need it. Right. Um, you know, we, we've been blessed with, we had to live through the Joe Exotic saga but it's finally paid off right um, with with all of this publicity to help the animals so right <clears throat> put your money in your local communities and 
there's so many home you know cats and dogs and that are out there you know starving and freezing that you know some of these these facilities will take in these no-kill shelters don't give your money to a kill shelter but give it to a no-kill shelter that supports you know keeps these animals alive until they can find homes right so looking back a few years you obvious you've seen something in joe what made you come here and work with joe well, you know lauren and i went to we were in colorado i had just leased that that big mansion out there prepaid a, a year's lease um, so i could save three thousand a month i paid the guy 120 grand up front and we went out there for three months i was going we went out there to buy a zoo um, similar to this one but it had some usda regulation problems well joe found out about this this wealthy guy going out to buy this zoo so he gets hold of us and he says look he says i want to come out there and give you my opinion on the park and tell you how you know what you're going to need to do and i thought great you know this guy's got the biggest tiger facility in the country and he wants to come give us advice so we flew him out there and him and travis his his husband and we wind him and dined him and took him skydiving and and took him to all the dispensaries so travis could load up on a few pounds of weed and then on the way back to the airport he, he wanted to buy us dinner and he took us into a steakhouse where he pulled out pictures of himself his face all beat to shit and swelled up and he said his, his organs were failing he was two hours from death and they pulled him back from the brink of death and he's, he told me at the time i'm hiv positive i've only got a, you know a year to live maybe two at the most and i want somebody who's smart and has got deep pockets to carry on my part <clears throat> so lauren and i came out here and we looked at it and we stayed out here going back and forth between here and colorado probably for four or five months and we came out here and it was in bad shape animals were skinny the, the utilities were off um, water bills were behind they were going to cut the water off this is city water and it was you know five thousand bucks a month and the you know, cats need water <clears throat> um, there's no wells on this property so and his, his lawyers against with his carol baskin lawsuit he was he was 35 or forty thousand um, dollars behind to them and they already cut him off so what we paid all of those <clears throat> came in here and I bought you know, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars worth of meat. I paid thirty-five thousand dollars to his lawyers to get them off of his back. Um, we paid the utilities and all the back pay. He, he hadn't paid people in months and months. <clears throat> so we came when we came out here. I thought, you know what? Uh, I've got the money to help. Let's help get these animals healthy, and we'll revisit this thing, you know, at the first of the year. Well, come the first of the year, he was flat broke again. And as opposed to me catching him back up and paying everything else, he shut down the zoo. He shut his zoo down and he was just gonna quit. So I told Lauren, I said, you know what? Let's form a corporation and we control it. We own it, open it back up. And that's what we did. And he, he said, you know, as long as I can live on the property, cause his house is back there. And, and, and I wanna do my tiger shows on the weekend. So, we, we put him on as an entertainment director and he um, once things once the park was making money again I told Lauren I said right, I can't take his shit he just drives me crazy let's go to Vegas so we went out to Vegas and that's one of the other misconceptions in that show they didn't show you that during this whole time he's trying to hire a hitman Lauren and I weren't even here we were living out in Vegas right and I was getting word back from fat James the undercover the informant <laughs> yeah, that um, jet ski boy, that, um, <laughs> that you don't come back here, they're investigating, shit's going down. He was feeding me all kinds of stuff, but I was getting p bits and pieces and it just didn't sound credible because he was, he's just the biggest liar you've ever met. Got it. And so and we never knew what to believe, but we knew something was going down. Um, we just didn't know to what degree. And you know, he was bringing in the informant, the FBI hitman. And Joe, right up there, I, I think on the porch, Joe told just, I want you to cut that bitch's head off. It was just, he was saying this to an FBI agent. And we heard that they had a truck up on the up on the interstate waiting to raid the park as soon as he handed the guy a deposit or any money. And Joe says, well, I don't have any money right now. I'm going to have to sell some tigers to get you some money. If he would have handed him money, they would have raided the park that day and arrested him on site. But because he didn't commit that overt act of handing them a dollar to 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 consummate the deal, they had to walk away and, and leave him. But they monitored him. They had, you know, tracking devices and on phones and everything else, warrants on tracking. But he just he's just dumb. You know, he let his greed and his anger for Carol Baskin get the best of him and cost him cost him his life. Right.
Wow. So he pretty much already originally came to you like, hey, I just want to do tiger shows at my spot. It's your spot. Yeah. Right he was tired. He was tired of owning, tired of the harassment by PETA, tired of the lawsuits by Baskin, tired of the legal bills. You know, legal bills. He, we were paying five thousand dollars a month in, in lawyer bills here, and still falling behind. You know, with, with attorney bills. So I think he just finally he'd done it for a lot of years. And then when when I beat the shit out of his husband, he just said, I, I can't be here for this. You know, one time we were in that office. And some disgruntled employer, this big black kid, was um, banging on the door. Actually, we had signs on the door: "Do not enter." Even if you knock, do not enter. Well, he he kind of he didn't knock the first time. He just barged in. And Lawrence says, "Excuse me, get out of here and knock on that door." And he wouldn't leave. He went. He was charging back to Joe. And Joe was sat in the back of the building, and I was always in the front. So this guy was gonna beat Joe's ass because Joe had pissed him off about something. And I went up and I got between Joe and this guy. I said, get the fuck out of here. And you know, he wouldn't do it. So I grabbed him by the shoulder and I dragged his ass to the front. Me and him got into a fight and I got him. We both fell to the ground I, and I had him in a chokehold. And he was second, he was seconds from going out. Lawrence kicking him in the face, <laughs> kicking him in the nose. She had a cowboy boots on. So Joe's, you can't beat up, you can't beat up the employees. I said, he was trying to attack you, you chicken shit asshole. So we get him up here. And and Joe's on the radio. We need help. Jeff's got you know they're in a fight. They're in a fight. So we get up and his kid's bloodied. Looked like he got hit by a truck. And um, they called the cops. And the cops got there. And they looked at this kid and they said, What happened? He goes, Nothing. He didn't want to admit that this old guy and this girl just beat his ass. So he. Um, but, but Joe. Joe was always afraid of us because of that. And I think you know you're violent and you. And then, so when I beat up his husband. And it was just, he couldn't deal with it anymore. As he's putting a hit on Carol Baskin. As he's putting a hit on Carol <laughs> He's afraid yeah, of you guys. He's a non-violent assassin. Yeah. <laughs> the best kind, right? What's maybe one story that hasn't been told? One crazy story with your interaction with Joe? We've, we've had so many interviews. I think I've exhausted my... Um, well, the here's crazy one. Shit. Here's one. Um, Joe used to, you know, obviously Joe used to steal meat off the meat trucks, the donated meat trucks. And we didn't know where he got his meat and he invited Lauren and I over to the house one night. Him and Rinky were going to have ribs and um, he cooked up, smelled really good and we went in the house and Rinky says, you know, we're going to, we're going to stand there at this, at this island, this kitchen counter. And Rinky says, you might not want to eat there. And I said, why? It looks clean. He goes, because that's where you used to pierce guys' dicks. Excuse me? He says, yeah, this is Joe used to, you know, give, um, what do they call it? Um, Prince, yeah, yeah. Prince Albert, or, yeah, Prince Albert. He says he used to pierce guys' dicks on that table. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I can't. Go. Oh! So. <laughs> Joe pierced dicks, you guys. Jeez. That ain't the worst thing he's done. Hold on, did you eat the food or no? Fuck no. What no. was the, what was the craziest thing Joe probably? Did? What's the worst thing you did? The worst thing Joe did was walk around here fucking farm animals or fucking the farm animals. Him and John Finley dressed up like John Finley dressed up like cheerleaders, and Joe would film him fucking all the animals. And the security guards that used to work here came to us and says, "I got you know I got something I got to tell you." And he says, "I used to walk security at night around this park." And he says, "And I'm telling you, like 2:30 in the morning, they would come out here and, and escort like sheep and goats and shit into that house." And he said, you'd hear horrible noises. And he says, an hour, hour and a half later, they'd be walking them back outside. So, yeah, and we found thumb drives that um, that had, you know, he was he was soliciting big black cock um, every Tuesday and Thursday out of Oklahoma City. I'll pay you $400. The Daily, um, Daily Mail just published the emails that we found. I'll pay you $400 for big black cock. And gave his address and... You know, he was getting, he was stealing 400 bucks a week, twice a week out of the park to pay for his, for his escapades. And we found a thumb drive, great big black dude, elbow deep, um, up, up Finley's ass. Who's Finley? John Finley, the one from the show. Wow. And the while, guy, while Joe was over, wow. jerking it on the couch and, John, you like this? You like what daddy got you? And, you know. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's just a disturbed, disturbed man. And. You know, the crimes that they got him for is just a, a fraction of what he's he's done. Wow. You think he'll ever get parole? No. Probably he's not. He's done. Federal time is always 85% if you're a model inmate. There's no way he'll be in. The Grady County was so sick of him by the time I got rid of him. 
because he thought he ran the place. So he'll 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 serve his entire sentence. Damn. He had 22 years and he's been in there a year and a half, so I'm sure they give him time served. But I mean, he'll never see. It. And I don't mm. think he'll survive that long. He'll take his own life, or right. he'll piss off somebody in a penitentiary, and they'll take it for him. Right. Right. He's just that crazy. <coughs> Probably ending this up because you're getting chilly as Get all of cold. us are. Um, yeah. What are your what are you, what are your views on COVID-19? Do you think tigers can get it or what? what? I don't think so. I, I think that's I think that was a opportunity for Brooklyn Zoo to be relevant in the Tiger King craze. And you know, coincidental. Why didn't a monkey get it? Why didn't a lion get it? Why was it a tiger during you know the most popular Netflix show in the history? Had to do with tigers. And my vet says there's no way. She wants to see the testing, the studies. She says the whole vet community is questioning the authenticity of that 